Yeah, so hi, Micropa Hunter here again. A nice looking algae that we have here. Um, yeah, I did not uh, have an easy time identifying it. It was not exactly the same in my reference book, uh, but it did have this uh, fancy sounding name, Selenastrum. Wow, it looks nice. Sickle shaped, shaped cells. And in this video, I'm going to show you um, two methods on how I collected uh, these algae and how I concentrated them. This is the pond uh, where I got it from. Um, the water, the pond water was a little bit greenish and turbid. This is a good sign that there are many microorganisms and algae floating around in the free water body. Normally they always settle down to the ground, but here there was um, something also in the water itself. Um, and that's of course a good sign. I took out my jar glass and I collected uh, a few, yeah, a little bit of this water here. Uh, the temperature was still uh, kind of cold. After all, it is uh, yeah, still a little bit uh, not quite spring yet, I want to say, um, but uh, looking at the jar, it was very clear that uh, the water was not completely um, yeah, clean and that's actually a good sign. So uh, this is basically also one thing that I found. Uh, the name of uh, this algae is called uh, Scenedesmus. Yeah, it looks uh, also quite nice in the colony. First uh, without oil immersion and then later with oil immersion right now, you can see the contrast is higher and also the image is a little bit brighter. So oil immersion does actually help. I personally don't like oil immersion very much because it's a little bit messy, but in any case. Well, what did I do at home? Uh, well, I used uh, a microliter pipette and I cut off the tip, the plastic tip, it's a disposable tip, because I did not want to force all of the algae and the water samples through a tiny hole because it would have uh, caused a lot of shear forces and it would have maybe destroyed some of the cells maybe. Maybe not the cells, but maybe some of the colonies. So what I've done now is I've uh, used uh, around, I don't know, 12 milliliters um, each um, in uh, two tubes because I was going to centrifuge them. I've got a, a relatively low cost centrifuge um, at home and uh, basically what I've done is I wanted to concentrate the algae this way. And again, that is Cenedesmus slightly larger. So you see that I'm alternating back and forth between the pictures that you see under the microscope and actually the method yeah, to keep the video a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, basically these uh, algae, because they are floating around in the free water body, they have to be concentrated. Otherwise, the chance of actually seeing them or finding them is relatively low if you simply take the water sample and observe it directly. So you need some method of concentrating them. And I decided to, to try out centrifugation and it did work. But actually there is an easier way to discover it later on. I'm gonna show you, actually surprisingly easy. And you can also try it at home. There were also those slightly box-shaped and square-shaped um, algae around. I could not uh, identify what they are, so if you know what they are, maybe you can uh, leave uh, a comment uh, below. But my reference book uh, did actually not include them. So some of them were round, uh, but many of them actually had this box uh, shape and uh, square shape. Yeah, some of them were moving around a little bit also because the water was evaporating. If you look very carefully, you can actually also see the chloroplasts inside those cells. This here, that's my centrifuge, uh, placed in three tubes, of course, equally spaced with all the same um, mass um, of water or the same volume of water in this case. And uh, then I simply was, uh, yeah, started it and I was spinning it for around 10 minutes. I was always slowly increasing the speed a little bit because I didn't know how much the tubes are gonna take. I also, not with this one, but when I still worked in the lab, I actually ended up breaking some of the tubes because I spun them too quickly. Well, after 10 minutes, um, I could see that there is some green stuff on the bottom of the tube. So I carefully uh, took off the supernatant, that's the clear liquid that you find at the top, and all of the algae and the cells are now on the bottom. And that's basically where I found also um, all of those uh, cells that you can see right now. So what do you have to do um, after you've carefully uh, uh, taken off the supernatant? Well, I tried to pour it off, uh, but that kind of also mixed and swirled up uh, the, yeah, the pellet on the bottom. The green stuff on the bottom of the tube is called the pellet. Uh, this one here, this one, I also found this one. No idea what it was, it was jumping around quickly as well. Yeah, so the pellet itself, uh, this uh, was the place uh, where I could find all of the algae, but uh, I uh, tried to pour the liquid off, didn't quite work, so I had to carefully remove it a uh, bit by bit again. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to find all of these interesting creatures um, also in the water sample. Yeah, again, uh, yeah, Stenedesmus, there were quite a few of those, uh, yeah found in the water sample. Now and then what I've done is, is of course I've uh, then taken um, some of uh, the water sample and placed it on a microscope slide. I'm just going to show this to you in a minute. 
and then I observed it um, of course uh, yeah first using low power and then also high power so here I'm now using of course uh, again my microliter pipette to remove all of the excess fluid on the top I simply mixed up the rest and poured it out on my microscope slide you can see it's actually quite green significantly greener than before the reason is of course because all of the cells in the algae are now concentrated um, and yeah much easier microscopy this way and this is where I found those guys here yeah not so much movement I have to tell you some of the cells were moving a little bit but as a matter of fact uh, most of the cells did not move very much uh, there were not a lot of ciliates visible um, that's also another thing and I assume that they basically uh, probably have already swum away um, into the supernatant after I centrifuged them because after all they are motile and mobile and I guess that they may be yeah, kind of scattered around again in the tube and then, then I discovered something after a day. I saw that after a day or so, many of the algae started to settle down on the bottom of the jar. And I simply have taken my pipette and have taken a sample from there. And this also worked. Now that's essentially the easy way out. You just let it stand for a day or so and wait until all of the cells sink to the bottom. And this is also the place where I saw more ciliates. And now the reason is, is maybe because uh, this is also um, where the food can be found. That's where a lot of organic material is. And those ciliates, they like, of course, to eat um, organic material. So they also swam down to the bottom where all of the rest is. And this is also where I found those. So you see, sometimes we don't need uh, extensive laboratory techniques sometimes things also work out uh, quite easily you just have to be patient and let it stand for a day or so yeah and I think for today this is enough uh, just another little suggestion of what you can now do when um, in springtime I wish you uh, yeah all the best happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye